Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros. With Magic Mountain's new announcement around the corner for 2019, I figured why not talk in depth about other possibilities for the new coaster next year. I've talked about the RMC T-Rex before in a previous video, you can check that out using the iCard in the top corner. But today I wanted to talk about something a little different and something that a lot of people probably don't expect me to talk about, but I want to talk about the argument for and against an SNS steeplechase at Magic Mountain in 2019. Now to get things started, let's talk about the arguments for an SNS steeplechase. And the first issue that comes to mind is the business side of things for me. This would be a terrific business decision for Magic Mountain because SNS we know is a little cheaper than most of the bigger companies like Mach or B&M. So it would be a cheaper investment and probably end up being a higher return value than a mock hyper coaster. But the big thing is this model really grabs the attention of a lot of families and people of all ages, even kids super young that are at least 42 inches of height, which would be the minimum height requirement, which is a little, it's a lot lower than a lot of the rides at Magic Mountain especially the coasters at Magic Mountain. But the biggest thing with this decision is the fact that Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opens in May or June of next year at Disneyland, just about two hours south, and we know a ton of families from around the country and around the world are going to come to Southern California next year. Now, I think it would be a better business decision because of this if you were to open an SNS steeplechase coaster, it would really appeal to families that are visiting SoCal that want to hit more than just Disneyland if they're here for a week or so. And yeah, they could look towards SeaWorld, or they could look towards Legoland, or they could look towards Knott's for family attractions. But what if Magic Mountain ends up building a family attraction that's like considered one of the biggest family attractions in the world, an SNS steeplechase coaster? I think it would be a heck of a lot more appealing to families to try and go to Magic Mountain next year after visiting Galaxy's Edge or right before visiting it. But Galaxy's Edge is slated to be the biggest land or attraction of any park next year, regardless of what you probably think. Even if a Giga opens up next year, I think Galaxy's Edge is going to be the biggest draw for any park in the world. So it would definitely be smarter for Magic Mountain to build something family oriented next year. Now, I know it's the 20th coaster, and you don't want to see it be a family attraction. You want to see a Giga, or you want to see something that the park hasn't seen before that's big and new and crazy and expensive. But honestly, I could see Magic Mountain building this in 2019 as their 20th coaster, and then 2021, during their 50th anniversary, that's when we get the big ride. Now let's talk another argument for and this is the modular building style that this type of coaster has. So now I will head over to Preston from SNS, who spoke about this at IAPA last year. Yeah, there's there's so many options with the steeplechase. We don't have necessarily a you know product. We we can take the layouts that we've designed and put out there, but it's really meant to go into the park, fit within their theming. <laughs> They're people per hour they want. We can do Mobius loops, we can do crossovers, lifts, we can launch them if we want. So as you just heard, it can duel, it can launch, it can even have launches. There you go, there's a clue. It can have a Mobius loop where it can race itself again. That could be two is better than one, you never know. And also an interesting thing is he said that the capacity could be suited for the park's needs. Now. Could this be fitting into the one, two, three, four poster that we've seen? Does that mean they could fit four riders per train? We don't really know. Um, that one's kind of more up in the air, but definitely launches, definitely dueling, definitely Morbius loop. And also he said it could fit to the park's boundaries and what they would like to see in size. In addition to the coaster being changeable in itself with the launches and the racing and all of that, you can also make it themed to anything you'd like or what the park would like specifically. Uh, so they could totally theme it to bikes or some type of space racer or something to fit in with the new racing theme. So it's totally doable to have theming 
all around this coaster and even themed trains and themed track. So I think that's all pluses right there, especially for the modular design that it has where you can pretty much do a heck of a lot with it that you can't do with a lot of different models. So this is another check mark in the four column for a steeplechase. Now let's go to my final argument for, for the steeplechase, and that is the nostalgia factor. If you go out, if you live in Southern California and you ask your parents, hey, do you remember Wacky Soapbox Racers? Odds are they do, and they miss it. I've talked to my parents about it, and they miss it dearly. I've talked to my friends' parents about it, and they miss it dearly. I've even seen other enthusiasts in the community that really wish Wacky Soapbox Racers was back in Southern California. This would add to the mar marketability of this coaster, and it could really tie back into the fact that it is like Wacky Soapbox Racers. Would it be more intense? Yeah. Would it be more insane? Yeah. But would it pull in the older group in Southern California and maybe even bring back a lot of locals that haven't been to Magic Mountain in a long time that have preferred knots because of the more family style? Could this totally bring in a bunch of people? Oh yeah. But I have not heard one person that says they do not want Wacky Soapbox Racers back at some point in Southern California. So this just adds to the theory that this could possibly be the coaster for next year. Now let's go to the arguments against. Whew. This is this is this is a big one. Or should I say it's a small one? But capacity, 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 capacity. This is the biggest problem I have with this coaster coming to Magic Mountain. If it becomes a, as big of a draw as I could see it being, there could be five plus hour waits for it because of capacity problems. Now, could they fit four riders per train? I, I could see it being a possibility, but even with that, you'd be sending between four and eight riders at a time if it was a dueling coaster, and that would only be every 30 seconds. We'd see a problem that we've seen with the RMC Raptors, and that is longer wait times and a lot less riders per hour. Now they said they could change that up depending on the park, so hopefully they can to the point where they could get a couple thousand riders per hour, um, but hopefully that doesn't mean every 500 feet of track there's a block section, because I feel like that would take away from the ride, unless it's stopping to link up with launches, which that would be, I'd be okay with that personally. But the operators would have to be top notch to be able to send out these cars or trains, considering they're one car length each, every 20 or so seconds, maybe even quicker. You really maybe even have to implement a moving station or something along those lines to really make sure the coaster is moving as fast as possible to get the best riders per hour possible. And now comes my second argument against the size of this coaster. Now, looking at the markers that we've seen at Magic Mountain lately, there have been some that we found behind Riddler's Revenge. Now, I'm not entirely sure if those are on park property or not. They look like they are, but I'm not entirely sure. So if it really is gonna go all the way behind Riddler's Revenge, it's gonna be a big and long coaster. Now, SNS also said that it could be as long as the park would like, but it just seems awkward to me to see a steeplechase coaster go that far out and then come all the way back and then go all the way to Deja Vu spot and then come back to the station, unless it's gonna be a four plus minute ride or if it's moving at 40 miles an hour, which I don't know about that, but I could see it happening possibly, but it's a little speed bump, I suppose, in this theory, especially if it's gonna be as big as we are possibly thinking right now. So in all honesty, I would love to see an SNS steeplechase come to Magic Mountain. I just, we gotta focus on capacity. We gotta focus on the track length and how big this coaster is if it's to have no major problems on opening day and past that. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking, oh no, the T-Rex is better, oh no, a Hyper's better, oh no, a Giga's better. Yes, technically, for us enthusiasts, yes, I would say that. But with Magic Mountain kind of lacking that family coaster that could bring in a lot of people from out of state and in state, it just makes more sense to me that this coaster be built than not. But what are your thoughts? I'll put a poll right here. Uh, do you think it'll be a steeplechase? Do you think it'll be a T-Rex? Do you think it'll be something we haven't thought of yet? Let me know, there's gonna be a poll right there. So I'm really excited for the announcement in a couple weeks, but we will keep making videos like this, going over a couple other models that I think 
could possibly be the answer for Magic Mountain next year. But subscribe if you want to follow us and all of the Magic Mountain updates that we will be coming out with. And of course, like the video if you did like it. It means a heck of a lot to us and it really helps us get put out there more. So I really appreciate that. And I hope you guys are all just as excited as I am for Magic Mountain's new coaster next year. As always, we'll see you on the next ride.